Hey, good morning, my Coffee with Brenna friends. Grab your beverage, grab your Bible. It's time for Coffee with Brenna. <laughs> my coffee's cold now. Guys, I got this new microphone so that you could hear me better and it would be clearer and guess what, it doesn't work, yay! So I just spent a lot of time trying to get that working and praise the Lord, I definitely needed to pray before I got started. <laughs> So I could calm my frustrations. It goes right with our topic of today, which is the believer's power. So I'm grateful today that my computer has a built-in microphone that works well enough. We've been doing this since November, and you guys have not complained that you couldn't hear me. So we will trudge forward, and I bought another part to try and get the microphone to work. And after that, I think I'm going to give up. <laughs> so... Um, we are talking today about the believer's power. In, in 2009, so back up a little bit, two, 2018, I read through this whole thing in a year. My church was reading the Bible in a year. Most people were reading the message. I felt like I wanted to read this, this beautiful hippie Bible, as I call it. And I did. And I noticed something when I got to Luke. I noticed how much he talked about power compared to the other synoptic gospels. And maybe I mentioned this before, because I thought I talked about the synoptic gospels a couple of weeks ago. Well, if it's a repeat, then I guess we both needed to hear it again. So in 2019, I did a study on the book of Luke. And um, I love the story in Luke 8 of Jesus calming the storm. And I won't go through the whole story. You can go check it out yourself. It's Luke 8, verses 22 through 25. At least that's what I have written down. And the disciples, how they replied to Jesus always strikes me. The disciples were terrified and amazed. Who is this man, they asked each other. When he gives a command, even the wind and the waves obey him. Who is this man? Who is this man? I just realized it's noon. I'm recording this at church and the bells are going to go off. They just started going off. So you may hear underscoring to this presentation today. I'm just going to keep going. We'll see how it goes. Um, who is this man? This is the power of the word spoken by God, whether it's the Father, Son, or the Holy Spirit. Another story, years ago, this was many years ago, probably early on in our marriage, so maybe 2003, 2004, because I used to do campus ministry. And our campus pastor sent us to visit this church, which was a very boisterous church, even for a Pentecostal church. And they sang this one song. I came to mind a couple of weeks ago because I played it for my fellow worship leader uh, to see if he knew the song. The song, the lyric is, no matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. And then the chorus goes, I win, I win, I win, I win. I heard that song once and I never forgot that song. No matter what the weapon is, I want you to know that I win. My chair is squeaking. And then the chorus, I win, I win, I win, I win. <laughs> you can laugh at my, my little performance there. But it hit home. We talked last week about Satan's power and that he is disarmed. But he still has schemes, and he still has some measure of power, even post-cross and resurrection. But no matter what the weapon is, God wins. And it says in Ephesians 1.19 that the same power that was exerted to raise Christ from the dead lives in us through the Holy Spirit. You can go read that in Ephesians 19. It goes on to 20 a little bit. Actually, go back to 18, because that's a good one, too. And then in Acts 1.8, Jesus tells the disciples to stay in Jerusalem until they receive power. Power what? To be God's witnesses. I'm going to pause for a second. Can you guys hear the bells? I feel like the bells have gone off before when I'm recording this, but at noon, I'm recording this on Thursday, they play a song. And I can't tell what it is because I was not raised in church. But it's pretty. So if we go back to what we talked about last week, and I'll put a link to that in case you missed it. 
we do have an enemy. We have a real enemy. We have a roaring lion enemy, right? We talked about that last week, how in Peter, Peter talked about him being not just a lion, but a roaring lion. Number one, we have an enemy. We have a real enemy. There's this great C.S. Lewis quote about one of, um, I am not going to remember it exactly, but it has to do with the fact that Satan's greatest trick is to convince us he doesn't exist. <laughs> but we have an enemy. In Colossians 2, we read that, number two, Jesus disarmed the enemy. He disarmed him and publicly shamed him. But number three, we have access to power. We have tons of access to power. <sighs> I'm going to read you a few scriptures that demonstrate this. So we have Philippians 3. I'm actually going to grab my Bible. It's a pretty famous passage, actually, uh, because Paul starts off about talking about how he considers all things loss for the sake of knowing Christ. Yes, so he talks about how he was a Pharisee, how he had a lot of reasons to boast, and then he goes on to say, but all these things that I once thought very worthwhile, now I've thrown them all away so that I can put my trust and hope in Christ alone. Yes, everything is worthless when compared with the priceless gain, priceless gain of knowing Jesus Christ my Lord. I put it all aside, counting it worth less than nothing, in order that I can have Christ and become one with him, no longer counting on being saved by being good enough or by obeying God's law, but by trusting Christ to save me. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith, counting on Christ alone. And now I'm going to, um, actually I'll keep reading here. I had it in a different translation here. Uh, verse 10 now, Philippians 3 verse 10. Now I have given up everything else. I have found it to be the only way to really know Christ and to experience the mighty power that brought him back to life again and to find out what it means to suffer and to die with him. So to experience the mighty power that brought him back from the dead. And um, in, I believe, the NIV, it says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The same power that was exerted to raise Christ from the dead lives in us, it says. Um, that power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand. I, I have Ephesians 1 memorized from years and years ago. All right, but then we have 1 Corinthians 1.18. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 4.20. For the kingdom of God does not consist in words, but in power. 1 Thessalonians 1.5. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. So the gospel came with power in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. Just, just as you know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. So there's a handful of scriptures about the power, the believer's power. There's tons. You can go to, um, you know what, I'm drawing a blank on which, which site you should go to. It's not, it might be Bible Hub, but I will put a link and I will um, if I can, put a link to all the New Testament passages that have that word power in it, um, the word that is translated power. I think it's pronounced dunamis, dunamis, um, the Greek word in the New Testament, okay? So we have power through the Holy Spirit. I want to, I want to share specifically with those of you who are praying for what appears to be an impossible situation, same power that was exerted to raise Christ from the dead lives in you. Stand on that promise. Pray in that power for that situation. And if you don't see it change, just keep praying. We all have those situations. I have that situation with my mom. I've been a believer for 21 years. She is still not only not a follower of Christ, she is stuck in alcoholism. And she's 70 years old. It's not like a little thing. She's been an alcoholic at least 35 years. She, I remember her drinking from a younger age than that, but she went to rehab for the first time when I was 13 and I'm 45. So 
she had been an alcoholic for several years before then. But remember, you, you're praying in power. The prayer of a righteous man availeth much. A righteous person. <laughs> that when, when the Bible says man, it actually almost always means people. I just want to tell that to the ladies out there. Uh, when, when, when Paul talks to the men of Athens, he means men because he was literally talking to men. But when the Bible, Old and New Testament says man, it actually means people almost all the time. Okay? So, the prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much, accomplishes much. And I want to say, if you're praying not for a situation, not for like a loved one's illness or freedom or salvation, but for something in your life, don't let that struggle defeat you. If you get up in the morning and you pray powerful prayers and you walk out of the house and whatever that struggle is engulfs you because something triggers you, you are the same person out there in the midst of your temptation than you were an hour ago when you were declaring the word of God over yourself, your life, and the life of your loved ones. Okay? I always tell people, <laughs> don't seek freedom. Seek the freedom giver. If, you're, if you want to know God's plan for your life, seek the planner. <laughs> seek, the, seek your creator. So if you want power, seek the one who has the power. At the same time, declaring and recognizing the gifts Jesus has given you. In, in the book of John, Jesus said, peace I give to you. I leave with you. I'm literally handing you this gift, but you have to receive it. There are some gifts like the power that was exerted to raise Christ from the dead that we have to receive. We have to say, Jesus, I receive your power. Holy Spirit, I receive your power. Jesus, I receive the peace that you left me. You have to stand on those promises, okay? And I will put those scriptures in the show notes. And the final thought. Are you getting to know the one about whom they said, who is this man? They were amazed and they were terrified. Something ever terrified you? Has God's power ever overwhelmed you so much or you see some you saw a miracle and you just can't believe it? Who is the God who holds this power? Well, he wants to share that power with you. Okay? So let's pray. Jesus, we love you so much. Even in the midst of the snafus of life, me trying to get that silly microphone to work for half an hour. I thank you that you still showed up during this time today, Lord God. Because it's not about my goodness. It's not about me having the perfect setup to get these videos done. It's about you wanting your word to go forth. And you wanting people to walk in the power that Jesus Christ died and was resurrected to give. And so I pray for my dear Coffee with Brenna listeners and watchers, Lord God. Lord Jesus, that they would declare over themselves in their lives, in their trials, in their tribulations, the power that is available to them because you died and were resurrected, Jesus Christ. The power that's exert, that was exerted to raise Christ from the dead lives in us because the Holy Spirit dwells in us as believers. And Lord, to anyone listening who may not know you as their Savior or they're not sure, I pray with you, we can pray together, Jesus, you can repeat after me, Jesus, and this is also for those who are rededicating your lives to Jesus or you just want more of him, Jesus, I declare you are Lord of my life, whether it's for the first time or the thousandth time. Lord, I receive your Holy Spirit, Lord. I want to walk in your power. And Jesus, I will call you Lord all of my days. Help me to not get discouraged, but to fix my eyes on you. Thank you, Lord God. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty name. All right, people, do you see my scripture here? Oh. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up 
with wings as eagles. I love it in my wonderful living Bible that I'm always talking about. It says they will gain new strength. So I pray you walk away from this video with new strength today and a renewed vision to receive his power, the gift he has left with us. All right, till next time. Thanks for joining me for Coffee with Brenna.